welcome everybody to our um, Merrick Pet Care Doggington University presentation. What we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about um, pet allergies. And because we're talking about pet allergies, it makes Merrick just like the best sponsor for today. And the reason is that Merrick's made with real food. And, you know, when you give your dog something to eat and you have no idea of what's in the can, you, you can't really tell what's what's going on there. But when you when you feed your, your dog or your cat Merrick, they're getting real food, the same kind of food that you would serve your family. After all, if you believe that your four-legged baby is a member of the family, you should be serving the best. Now, we're going to be doing things a little bit different today, and that is, as you know, we always give one person, um, they're going to answer a question based on what our guest tonight shares, and you can win a coupon for a 25-pound bag of grain-free real Texas beef sweet potato mix. And um, and plus, and this is where Merrick steps up to the plate, they're going to donate another bag of dog food to National Mill Dog Rescue at a time that's absolutely critical considering what's going on. Uh, Dr. Sean is a holistic veterinarian. He's an author. He's a radio talk show host. He's a practicing vet in Texas at the Paws and Claws Animal Hospital and Holistic Pet Center. As a holistic doctor, Dr. Sean prefers to treat the pet rather than the disease, or at worst, treat the signs and symptoms. Ultimately, he says that pets benefit from this method of care. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make Dr. Sean the presenter. All right, we're set to go. Yep, yeah, take it away. <clears throat> All right, well, thank you, everybody, for joining me tonight. Thanks so much for the Doggington Post for inviting me to come share my passion and my love for a more natural approach to pet care. And, of course, thanks to Merrick, uh, maker of great pet food, for sponsoring my presentation as well. So tonight we're going to spend a few minutes talking about how we can use some natural therapies or integrative therapies to help our pets that have some allergies, that have some things wrong with them from a skin, itchy skin, itchy ear condition. This is actually a great time to do this because it is summer now and we see a lot of pets with skin problems, so it's not unusual for us to be talking about this. On the first page there, I'm going to direct you also, if you have a chance during or after our webinar, to go to either of my websites. I'm going to give you a warning that this is a little bit of a self-promotion at the start, but if you go to the first website, drshawnsnaturals.com, you'll see some of the different therapies we're going to be talking about tonight that I've designed for my own practice that are also available for sale to the public. And petcarenaturally.com is my website that really provides a lot of free information, uh, some links to different products, links to my books, etc. So check out both of those websites. We'll talk more about them as we get towards the end of our presentation. So let me see here. My PowerPoint is kind of locked up, so let me see why we're having a problem there. Here we go. All right, perfect. So let's talk about allergies. When we talk about allergies, we're talking about itchy pets. And I'm going to have to move some things around my screen since I've got something blocking me. There we go. All right, so the typical pet, and we're going to talk about dogs mainly tonight, although this could apply to cats too, but we're going to focus on dogs, typically is either one to three years of age or they've lived in the area for one to three years. And that's because allergies don't develop overnight. The pet or person with allergies has to be exposed to the allergen, the foreign protein, like Bermuda grass, St. Augustine, whatever. And the first exposure does not result in an allergic response. It takes more than one exposure to develop an allergic response. We'll go through that here in just a little bit and I'll explain why that is. So they're usually in an area within one to three years. Okay, any breed of dog can develop allergies. We tend to see allergies overrepresented in certain breeds, especially spaniels, retrievers, terriers, and Dalmatians. And there's a little picture of a West Highland White Terrier. Terriers are the number one group of dogs to develop allergies, and actually Westies are the number one breed of dog to develop allergies. So whenever I see a Westie in my practice that doesn't have abnormal skin, 
especially if they're not spayed or neutered. I really encourage owners to breed those dogs because we need to have more good Westies that don't have bad skin disease. Allergies are a genetic disease and pets and people with allergies have a genetic predisposition to overreact to allergens that don't affect other pets and people that don't have the genetic predisposition. Now, the biochemistry of allergies has to deal with a class of antibodies called IgE, or immunoglobulin E. I'm not going to get too involved with the science behind it. We'll show some slides here in a minute that go through the biochemical pathway just a little bit so you understand what's happening. But in addition to IgE, we've now learned so much more about allergies than what I learned 25, 30 years ago when I was starting, which is we have other classes of antibodies and cells that are involved in an allergic response. IgE is the typical antibody that develops, and I'll show you how here in just a moment with our graphic, when the pet is exposed to allergens, to foreign proteins. And these allergens cause IgE antibodies to be made by white blood cells. Those IgE antibodies bind to receptors on certain kinds of cells called mast cells, and when those mast cells are activated, they degranulate, they basically blow up, and the contents of the mast cells release all these chemicals that cause the pets to itch and or turn red, have these typical allergic signs. T cells may also be involved, I'm going to show that here in a minute as well, and I put cyclosporin in parentheses because that's a new class of drugs that actually helps work on T cell modulation to help control allergies. A question I'm always asked is, can we cure allergies? And I used to tell my clients, I can't cure your pet's allergies, it's just a genetic problem. I don't really truly believe that's true anymore. I think we either can cure allergies in some pets, and I've seen this in my own practice, or at the very least using natural therapies, not drugs, we can alter the pet's genetic response and biochemical response to allergens by manipulating their cells, by manipulating the cell membranes, the DNA. A very fascinating part of medicine for people and pets right now is a field of medicine called nutrigenomics, where we're using nutrients, food, nutritional supplements, to alter genes, to alter gene expressions through DNA. And I probably won't be alive to see this really, really implemented, but our goal one day is to be able to take your pet or take yourself, and by studying your genes, figure out which pet foods are best for your pet, which supplements are best for your pet, which ones are most likely to help, which ones are most likely to maybe not help, and totally individualize your pet's medical therapy using nutritional supplements. Here's a nice graphic I found that kind of talks about and shows in some detail what happens in your pet's body and your own body with allergies. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm going to direct you to look at the left side of the screen, A, where you see some blood, you see some cells over here and some tissue. Basically what happens is IgE is formed way over here on letter F when certain kinds of white blood cells, T cells, B cells, and plasma cells are exposed to these little blue dots that are the, uh, not the little blue dots, but are, they're exposed to the allergens, these little green dots that come in the body. B shows a certain cell called an antigen or allergen presenting cell, goes through several, several biochemical steps, and then you get to these plasma cells making these Y-shaped little stick things called IgE. IgE then is going to a mast cell over here at GNH. When the specific allergen attaches to that little Y-shaped IgE piece, it's like a lock and key. And that lock and key opens the door. Actually, what happens is these mast cells blow up. They degranulate, and all these little colored dots are different chemicals, histamine, serotonin, bradykinin, substance P. All of those little chemicals then cause your pets to itch or sneeze or wheeze. And this is a graphic, another graphic showing this basically for a person, but the same would hold true for a pet. The first time the allergy-prone patient runs across an allergen such as ragweed, the patient makes large amounts of ragweed-specific IgE that attach to the mast cells. The mast cells bind to the allergens on the second or third or tenth exposure, basically die, vomit up all the chemicals inside, then you get these chemicals there causing the symptoms that we see. So that's what's happening inside your pet's body. When we talk about therapy, whether it's drugs or supplements, we're trying to stop some of those biochemical processes from happening and try and reverse some of the clinical signs. So the typical allergic pet is very interesting. 
most pets with allergies are itchy dogs, but their skin is normal. So how do you tell the pet's itchy? Well, or a pet's allergic? Well, the skin is usually normal, but they're itching. If the skin's abnormal, it often is a result of a secondary process that could be secondary to the allergy, like a bacterial or a yeast infection, or it could be an itchy pet that's got a skin disease like mange or ringworm or pemphigus that has nothing to do with allergies. So what I can do in practice, because I've seen a lot of allergic pets, I've taken a lot of histories from pet owners with allergic pets, very easily, usually on the first visit, do a couple of quick, simple exams and tests that are very, very easy to do, and just very simply go ahead and tell the pet's allergic. Now, if the pet has some skin scabs or rashes, we may need to do some more testing to see if the pet's got a secondary infection, which is actually very common for pets with allergies. But if allergies are the only problem with no secondary infections, then the pet's itchy, but their skin and ears are pretty normal. Now, when I was in school almost 30 years ago, we learned that allergic pets typically scratch at their face, feet, the axilla, or the armpits, and the ventrum is the underside of them. So classically, these itchy allergic pets were what were called face rubbers, feet lickers, and armpit scratchers. I should point out that itching in dogs can be any number of manifestations. For example, the pet can scratch, it can bite, it can rub, it can chew, it can rub its face, it can rub up against the wall or the couch. So when I ask a lot of owners, is your dog itchy, they'll say, no, he didn't itch at all, he just rubs a lot. Well, rubbing is a way of itching. So anything where the pet is trying to relieve the allergic signs um, is a sign of itching. Now, I don't see a lot of these classic itchy dogs anymore. I see dogs that are itching just generalized anywhere on their body. So I don't see a lot of the typical face rubbers, feet lickers, and armpit scratchers. We still see some of those, but I just typically see dogs that have generalized itching. Another thing I should point out is that many dogs have chronic skin infections or chronic ear infections, and they're misdiagnosed as having an infection as the primary problem when really the underlying problem could be something like allergies or food intolerance, food allergies, thyroid disease, adrenal disease, diabetes. So simply because we have a chronic ear problem or skin problem, that doesn't get us to the root of the problem. As we mentioned in the introduction, I'm not interested just in treating your pet's skin. I'm trying to get your pet healthy, so I have to find out, why is this dog itchy? Why does this dog have chronic infections? And allergies may be only a part of it. This means treatment can be complicated and can be expensive. It can take months to figure out because we're trying to help the pet, not just simply make them temporarily stop itching with some steroids or antibiotics, which is the typical conventional approach to treating skin disease. Usually with allergies, there are no primary skin lesions unless we have secondary infections. You might see erythema, meaning some redness or inflammation, some moist dermatitis like hot spots, alopecia means hair loss, and sometimes some secondary excoriations or ulcerations from the pet itching, rubbing, scratching, biting, licking, chewing. Secondary infections can be very common, especially if these allergies are chronic and not treated properly, and especially if corticosteroids like prednisone are a main part of the therapy. That will almost guarantee more chronic infections if all we're using is chronic use of prednisone to help these pets. And the common infections are staph bacteria and malassezia yeast dermatitis, especially for Westies and Cocker Spaniels. As I mentioned, a lot of things can cause a dog to itch, so we need to rule out problems such as fleas, food allergies, food hypersensitivities, low thyroid disease, several kinds of mange, and a lot of my patients, especially little small dogs, little terriers, have OCD, an obsessive, compulsive, almost anxiety-driven desire to scratch an itch. So oftentimes, as I'm treating these pets with allergies, remember, I'm not treating the allergies, I'm treating the pet, I will include natural holistic therapies to help pets not be quite so stressful, not be quite so obsessive and compulsive about their itching. Now here's something that's very important for veterinarians and pet owners to keep in mind. If we need to use steroids as part of our therapy for itching, and sometimes we do, if we need to do that and the pet's allergic, the pet should get better almost overnight. If we're using steroids as part of our therapy and the pet's not really getting better, we need to question our diagnosis because allergies are much less likely to be a cause of the pet's itching but other diseases like mange or food allergies or autoimmune diseases like pemphigus 
or more likely to be a problem. Here's a little Boston Terrier mix. I think you can see there's some redness around the nose, the muzzle, even around the ears. In front of the ears, there is some, uh, some redness. I don't know if you can see my pointer on your screen, but I'm pointing at the area right in front of the ears. And right around the eyes, the dog has got some thinning of hair and a little bit red because this dog's been rubbing at its eyes. It's been rubbing at its lips as well. Here's a dog that has normal skin, but it's just kind of itching, actually itching in his ears. Here's a little dog with some red feet. This dog more than likely also has some bacteria or yeast complicating this foot licking issue, mainly because you can see there's a little bit of yellow discoloration there. And if you examine these feet closer, you'd probably see some brownish, some brown waxy buildup in between those toes. I don't think anybody could mistake this dog for having some lesions. This is a Dalmatian with a lot of little red bumps on it, probably a secondary infection to the itching. There's another dog with chronic dermatitis from allergies. This is a Westie. This is typical of the Westies I see that don't have a lot of hair. Very thickened skin, almost elephant-like skin. Very thickened, some extra pigment on there. Missing hair, if you were to smell this dog, it'd probably stink from the secondary seborrhea for the yeast and the infections, the bacteria. And uh, this is a dog that has been losing hair for some time and is gonna take some time to grow the hair back. However, this could also be a dog with thyroid disease, adrenal disease, even cancer. So you can't look at this dog and say it's chronic itching, chronic allergies, but this would be typical of a dog that is incorrectly treated and just isn't getting better. This is a Labrador Retriever, typical of the breeds that I see with allergies. And this dog actually is typical of about half the patients I see with allergies. This dog has normal skin. You can't tell there's anything wrong with this dog until you watch him for a few minutes and he starts itching a lot. So no skin lesions, no skin infections, just typical itchy dog with normal looking skin and ears. So how do conventional doctors treat allergic pets? Well, antihistamines can be used, and I listed several there. Antihistamines, which are H1 blockers or H2 blockers, can also be used. Side effects include drowsiness from overdosing these pets. Usually the drowsiness will improve in a few days and you don't have to stop giving the drug. Most owners do because they don't want their pets to be too drowsy. Uh, antihistamines, if they help your pet, are actually safer for stero than steroids, especially if you have to use them long term. So if I have to use a drug long term, I'd rather use antihistamines. I'd rather not use any drug long term. But if I have to use a drug long term, antihistamines are fine. However, in dogs, antihistamines usually don't work. So most of the time we can't find an antihistamine to work if we're going to even try that. So what I tell people is if we need to try an antihistamine, you're going to give it for about three to seven days. If it's going to work, it will work within a week. If it doesn't work, it's not going to work. Get rid of it. Try something different. Most owners I see who are trying antihistamines don't give the correct dose of drug. They somehow make up a dose on their own or their veterinarian uses too low of a dose. Whoops. Let's get back to the slideshow here. Okay, I lost my pointer. I'm not sure what happened here. You're let's not in the slideshow mode. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, somehow we escaped there. All right, good. So, most of the time when antihistamines don't work, they're either not going to work or maybe it's the wrong dose. So, oftentimes we have to give higher doses than you'd expect for people. And if you need to use an antihistamine, the safest way to use it is use the lowest dose that works, only when you need to use it. If you have to use antihistamines, they are compatible with steroids and with complementary and alternative medicine, CAVM. So if we need to use natural therapies, that's fine. Often when I see pets, as I mentioned, taking antihistamines, they're given a way too low overdose, and pets need to be dosed much, much higher than people if the antihistamines are going to work. So you can't tell if the antihistamines working or not working simply because they could be given the wrong dose. So let's talk about steroids. A lot of pets are given steroids. Steroids can be used safely. Oftentimes they're not though, which is why I see these pets because these owners are giving way too many steroids. They want to do something different. This just tells how steroids work biochemically. doesn't really matter for us too much, but the steroids do inhibit some of these chemicals that we saw in those earlier colored slides, and they do stabilize those mast cells so the mast cells don't explode and release all their granules. So steroids can work very effectively that way. Steroids are very effective when they're used correctly. As a matter of fact, as I mentioned a few slides ago, if you're using steroids and the pet doesn't get better, it probably doesn't have allergies. It's its primary source of itching because steroids literally work that well. So anytime we have to use steroids, if someone says the pet's just itching and itching, we keep getting higher steroid doses, a light needs to go off in someone's head, hopefully the veterinarian's head, and say, look, 
this is probably not allergies. We need to do some more testing here. Okay, so I keep getting these little pop-up things that are messing me up. I don't know why, but let's just keep going along. All right, long-term, we do have some side effects, some serious side effects from steroids, including obesity. DM stands for diabetes mellitus, Cushing's disease, which is an adrenal disease. We alter the laboratory values in the blood and urine. We get secondary infections. We get hepatic lividosis, which is fatty liver disease. We get osteoporosis, and we get demodectic mange. None of those are good diseases. I've seen all of them with chronic steroid use, so we don't want to use steroids more than we need to. Short-acting steroids, if you have to use steroids, short-acting is the way to go. Oral, preferably, sometimes short-acting injections can be given right away if the pet's really itchy. I will tell you, unfortunately, most veterinarians don't use short-acting steroids. They use long-acting depo injections, depomedrol and other drugs like that. The problem with those drugs is they stay in your pet's body for two to three months, causing all these long-term side effects we just mentioned, but they only control itching for a week or two. So why would you want to give a long-acting steroid, knowing it's going to stay in the pet's body and cause harm, but it's only going to help the itching for a week or two. Much better to use short-acting steroids that go away after 24 hours because we can dose them again the next day or two days later if we need to do it. The correct dose of steroid is the lowest one that works for the pet, not the textbook dose, the lowest dose that works for your pet. The nice news is if you use some of the supplements we're going to discuss here, you can usually get much, much lower doses of steroids. As a matter of fact, the doses of steroids I use in my practice technically shouldn't work to control itching if you read the textbooks, but these pets are on a very aggressive natural approach and that's why we can use the lowest dose of prednisone or whatever steroid we want to use. The goal of any treatment is to make the pet comfortably itchy. I'd love to tell you we can get rid of all itchiness. That's not going to happen. We want the pet to get comfortably itchy. If the pet gets prednisone that day, it's going to get a bath that day. We'll talk about bathing more in a minute. The pet will tell you when it needs steroids because it's itching more, a bath doesn't help, doubling the supplements doesn't help, okay, we're going to give a little low-dose steroid that day. And usually every 48 to 72 hours, if we give prednisone at a low dose, that will not cause the long-term side effects I mentioned earlier. So steroids can be used safely. We don't want to overuse them. Earlier in the first slide, I mentioned that we have some new uh, understanding of allergies. No longer do we just have IgE antibody causing itching. We also have some chemicals produced and some imbalances of T white blood cells. Well, a new drug called Atopica, which is cyclosporin, has been developed to help dampen that T cell response for some of these allergic pets that have T cell responsive allergies. So it's used in refractory cases as a rule. It's one of those last drugs you use for pets with itching that just don't help if you go the drug route. And once again, we're going to talk a lot about natural therapies. It interferes with T cell activation. It is a very expensive drug, a number of potential side effects, including fatalities from immune suppression. This is a very, very strong drug. This is what they use for people and for cats that have organ transplants, like kidney transplants, which really strongly shutting down the immune system, which causes the side effects. I never use this drug. I've seen a few dogs that come to me on referral basis that are on the drug and it's not helping them at all, so we get them off of it. Very expensive, potential serious side effects. I don't really see a use for it. If your pet needs to be on it, you don't want to give them vaccines. And the question I ask is, why would we use this? And my only use for this would be if I've tried everything I can think of for this pet and it's so uncomfortable, we're either going to end the pet's life through euthanasia or we're going to try a topic and hope it works. So let's talk about some complementary or natural therapies since that's the focus of our talk tonight. When we treat pets with allergies, keep in mind we're not treating allergies, we're treating pets. And oftentimes I'll use therapies that have nothing to do with the allergies, nothing to do with the skin. And the owner will say, well, why are we giving herbs for the liver, herbs for the kidney, or detoxing the pet? Why are we giving probiotics for the immune system, for the GI system? And the answer is because I'm not treating allergies, I'm treating your pet. And your particular pet may need a lot of support above and beyond just helping the skin heal. So a holistic approach looks at the whole pet. Now, early on, this is more extensive and sometimes more expensive. But long term, it's better and cheaper because we're going to get your pet better and heal your pet rather than just pet, make your pet feel better 
and you keep coming back for more and more steroids, antibiotics, etc. So I've listed some herbal remedies here, aloe vera, oatmeal, lavender, peppermint, chamomile, calendula, all of those things can work very, very well. Herbs do a number of things. They support the liver. They help with antioxidants. They have antihistamine effects. They get rid of heat and dampness. They get rid of internal toxicity. They detox the pet. They strengthen the liver. And they help with leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome is very common in pets that have been taking steroids, antibiotics, and other drugs for anything more than one or two weeks at a time. It's GI damage. GI damage exposes the pet to absorbing more allergens from the food and everything, anything else associated with eating and drinking, so we have to help heal the gut to heal the allergies. One of my favorite herbal remedies is a shampoo I developed called Dr. Sean's Itch Relief Shampoo. It's an organic base with several herbs in it, and this is my shampoo that I use for any pet with skin disease, no matter what the cause. You can bathe your pet a hundred times a day with this. It's not going to hurt the skin. It's not going to dry them out. It's the only shampoo I really recommend for frequent bathing because it is an organic oil base that conditions as it cleans. It's effective at reducing itching, redness, scaliness, and infection. It's got a very pleasant lavender fragrance, and it's safe for the pets, the owners, and the environment. It's a very green product, and that's a picture of it right there with a the cute little dog and cat right on the label. A lot of different herbs we can use orally. Licorice is a great herb that's an alternative to steroids. Dandelion leaf is a diuretic that helps clean the waste out. And I've listed some, other, listed some other ones here that are all designed to work on those chemicals we saw in one of the earlier slides with all the colored pictures. All those chemicals that are released by the mast cells and the T cells when they're exposed to allergens, we're trying to basically prevent those chemicals from causing the allergic response. One of the remedies that I've created for my own patients that's available on my website, drshawnsnaturals.com, is an herbal remedy. It's a Chinese herb called Zhao Skin Allergy Support. Very, very effective. One of my most effective remedies that I use in my practice. It's actually one of the few remedies I use in my practice that I do make available to the general public for sale because it's very, very safe. We use a lot of remedies in my practice that are not available for sale unless you're a client of mine. We'll talk about how you can become a client if you want to do that because they're just stronger and I need to make sure we're not having herb, herb, or herb drug interactions. But the Zhao Skin Allergy Support is actually good for itching for any reason, specifically allergies, but any itchy pet can benefit from that therapy. I've used it on thousands of pets with no side effects. There's always going to be an individual pet that doesn't like it, maybe has some vomiting or diarrhea, but that's more an individual sensitivity, not really a response of anything within the herbal remedy. You don't need many drops for your pet. It's usually three to five drops a couple times a day on the food. And when we're using this herbal remedy plus the Dr. Sean's Itch Release Shampoo with frequent bathing, we can use fewer steroids, which is our goal. And those are some of the ingredients in the Zhao Skin Allergy Relief. And there's a little picture of it, a one ounce bottle. Very, very easy to use. Just put it right on the pet's food and not a big deal at all. There are some homeopathics that will also combine with the Zhao Skin Relief and some other therapies. Um, sometimes we use acupuncture or chiropractic or cold laser therapy. These are all used to help modulate the immune response. And here's a Labrador with a bunch of needles in them that uh, is getting an acupuncture treatment to help modulate the immune or inflammatory response from the allergies. Fish oil is wonderful. It's one of my favorite uh, remedies. You can use flaxseed oil, but Fish oil is in a more active form, so I try not to use flaxseed oil because it doesn't work very well. It's still safe to use. Actually, the best way to use flaxseed is not the oil, but to freshly grind some brown flax seeds at home. Get a little coffee grinder. Grind up a bunch of flax seeds. Keep in your refrigerator after you grind them. Sprinkle about a teaspoon to a tablespoon a couple times a day on your dog or cat's food. On your food as well, I put it on my cereal, my waffles, my ice cream. It's very flavorless, but it's got a lot of health benefits, including fighting cancer. So I really like it for my cancer patients as well. Keep in mind with fish oil, while it can work overnight, what we're trying to do with fish oil is actually have the fatty acids in the fish oil be incorporated into the cell membranes of the dog's body. So we're actually changing the cellular structure, literally changing the cellular anatomy. That takes about four to six months to do that. So sometimes fish oil can take a little bit longer to work. And in people, we have so many bad fats in our food. And in pets, we have a lot of garbage, a lot of crappy foods out there. That's why Merrick and some of these other foods can be very healthy because we're lowering the amounts of the inflammation causing omega-6 
and replacing them with the anti-inflammation omega-3s, and fish oil does that as well. So we'll kind of skip through that. Antioxidants, I listed some here that are very popular antioxidants. They fight oxidation through cell damage. They have some antihistamine effects. They modulate some of these inflammatory chemicals we saw earlier in my color graphic. And there are different ones that I like. These particular products, Super Antiox and Total Anti-Inflam, are popular products in my practice. They're not available for sale for the general public, but if you're a patient of ours, you can use those in conjunction with the Zhao skin allergy support and some of the other remedies we talked about. I do also want to mention another website there. You can click on that link. That is a supplement called Vim and Vigor. That is my favorite supplement to give all dogs and cats, whether they're healthy or sick, to try to keep them healthy. It's a twice a day chewable treat for dogs, a bacon flavored powder for cats. My cats love it. My dog loves the, the little treats. And I use that in conjunction with the other remedies. This particular product, Vim and Vigor, is also very helpful for pets that seem to itch more at night, which is true for so many allergic pets. And that's a picture of the bottle of the Vim and Vigor, the daytime formula on the left, the nighttime formula on the right. Let's talk about topical decontamination, which is basically bathing. There's an old wives' tale that says you can't bathe dogs very often because you'll dry out their skin. And that is true with a lot of shampoos. You will dry out their skin, so you don't want to overbathe them. However, the most important thing you can do for a pet with skin disease is to bathe it frequently. That will really reduce the amount of medication like steroids antibiotics you need to use. Because of my alternative natural remedies I've developed, some of which we've talked about, and by using the Dr. Sean's Itch Relief Shampoo, if you use it frequently, in my practice, very few of my patients with skin infections get any drugs. I hardly ever use antibiotics for skin infections. I never use antifungal drugs for yeast infections. I don't have to. The remedies I've developed work really well and act as natural antibiotics, antifungals, supporting the immune system. And by bathing the pet frequently, you are cleaning the pet. You are getting rid of all of the bacteria and the yeast and the allergens on your pet's skin. Don't forget your pet is allergic to and itches from these little pollens and moles and things that get on the dog's skin. They're absorbed into the body. Remember that slide we showed earlier? They're absorbed into the body and they cause problems. Well, if you're bathing frequently, you're cleansing the skin, you're using the Dr. Sean's Itch Relief Shampoo, which actually has some anti-inflammatory, anti-itching properties. You're removing the bacteria, the yeast, and the foreign proteins that cause the itching, so you have to do that all the time. Compare it to yourself. If you have dandruff, you can't use a dandruff shampoo once a week, once a month, and think your dandruff is going away. If you read the bottle, it actually tells you to shampoo a couple times a day. You have to do it that often to kill the yeast that cause dandruff and kill the, uh, the bacteria on your scalp and remove all the scales. The same is true with topical therapy for your pet. The Dr. Sean's Itch Relief Shampoo will not dry out your pet's skin. You also need to treat the secondary infections with a product I've developed called Olive Leaf Plus. That is my alternative to antibiotics and uh, anti-yeast uh, drugs. It is effective in most of my patients. So 75-80% of my patients will not get antibiotics. None of them get antifungal drugs. And with a very aggressive regimen using some other products I'll mention here in a moment, but including the Olive Leaf Plus, we can really cure most of these skin and ear infections. Another tip I'm going to give you is after bathing with the Dr. Sean's Itch Relief Shampoo, get some plain white vinegar and mix it one part vinegar, one to four parts water. Normally four parts of water to start off with, especially if your pet's got a lot of inflammation or open sores because the vinegar can burn. After you bathe with the shampoo, you rinse the shampoo off, you pour the vinegar water on the pet, use a sponge underneath the body, on the underside, the groin, the armpits, and you don't rinse it off. You can dry the dog but you don't rinse it off. You want that vinegar to stay on there. That's acetic acid. That's going to kill some yeast and bacteria in between bathing. I mentioned Olive Leaf Plus as one of the products I've developed to help with the immune system. It's great for cancer as well, but also I use it a lot for skin and ear infections, and that's what it looks like that's also available at drshawnsnaturals.com, and there, of course, is a picture, once again, of the Itch Relief Shampoo. So how do I treat allergies? Well, keep in mind I don't treat allergies. I treat allergic pets. I treat pets with allergies, not allergies. If we need to use steroids or other drugs, we use the lowest dose possible. And mainly when they're flaring up in spring and fall is when I use it. 
We're keeping the pet comfortably itchy. We're not totally wiping out itching. We're bathing frequently, and they usually that means every day for one to two weeks, then as needed, one to three times a week to keep the pet comfortably itchy. We're cleaning the ears after bathing. We don't want to get water or shampoo in the ears, so we're going to use uh, my natural herbal ear wash, which is an alcohol-free ear wash. And I'll give you another little tip. That ear cleaner, the ear wash, can be used for frequent ear cleanings. If you've got like a cock or a Labrador with these greasy, smelly ears, it's also my number one product to use in place of drugs to kill ear infections, and it works in about 80% of pets with ear infections. So we're frequently bathing the pet with the all-natural itch release shampoo. We're using the Zhao Skin Allergy Support. We're using Olive Leaf Plus. We're using the natural ear wash. And if we have a particularly stubborn infection or chronic problem, we're using a product I developed called Healthy Chi. That's also on my website, petcarenet or uh, drshawnsnaturals.com. Healthy Chi. I also mentioned Stress Away. That's a product on my website that helps these pets that have a lot of nighttime itching or that have this obsessive compulsive to their itching we mentioned earlier. A lot of little terriers just love to bite, lick, and chew. They just get obsessive about it. The Stress Away is a natural herbal remedy. Also works great for thunderstorm phobias, for going to the vet's office or the groomer's office if there's any stress there. We're also going to add in some fatty acids, some antioxidants, and any other supplements we need. If your pet is a patient of mine, I have about 50 different things I can use in my office for your pet to help with skin problems, ear problems, infections, and allergies. Don't forget we want to get a proper diagnosis. We want to make sure we don't have other problems, so oftentimes in the first visit, I'll be drawing blood, I'll be doing skin swabs and skin scrapings, I'll be looking for yeast and bacteria and mites, we'll be looking for thyroid disease, adrenal disease, urinalysis. We just want to make sure we don't have other problems. We want to focus on a very good diet like Merrick or something similar to that. We want to not vaccinate pets. They don't need vaccines anyway every year. We do blood titer tests, and there's more on my website, petcarenatri.com, about that, but we don't vaccinate pets. Every year they don't need it. We definitely don't vaccinate pets that have an outbreak of a skin allergy or skin infection because we're just going to make them worse. And I tell people, if you're a client of mine but you live a distance away, we do a lot of phone consults with people. People come from hundreds of miles, thousands of miles away sometimes to visit us. So I'll tell them, when you go back to your vet, please do not get your pet vaccinated next year. And sometimes people forget when the vet sneaks in a vaccine anyway, Within about three to five days, I get a phone call. Dr. Sean, my pet's itching again. He's all broken out. Your program was working great. Now my pet's a wreck again. What do I do? And when I talk to them, I ask them, has your pet had any vaccines lately? Yes, we just did that the other day. That's the reason why. Now we get to start spending a lot more money and start from scratch to get this pet better. So please don't over-vaccinate your pet. Don't use flea and tick chemicals if you need it. Heartworm prevention is fine. And keep in mind that a holistic program is an individual program. How I treat your dog with allergies is different from every other dog I see. I mentioned some things you can do, the all-natural itch release shampoo, the Zhao Skin Allergy Support, the Olive Leaf Plus, the Ear Wash, etc. Those are standard therapies I use for all of my patients. But then we tweak things a little bit with some of these other remedies that are not available on my website or over the counter based upon your pet's response to our initial diagnosis and treatment. So sometimes it can take a few months up to a year to really fine tune this. If your dog's been itching for five years and you've been through all these drugs and allergy shots and it's not getting anywhere, it's foolish to think overnight I'm gonna help your pet. The only thing that works overnight are steroids and sometimes I'll use them in a low dose to get your pet comfortable quickly. But we have to get your pet healthy and it takes a while to do that. I like to see pets through all four seasons so I know when to expect flare ups and I tell owners, keep a diary of what, work, what works for you, what doesn't work, and when. When I see an allergic pet, a month later I want to recheck that pet, and I want you to tell me, hey, what's working? How often were you able to bathe your pet? If you couldn't bathe your pet every day, that's maybe part of the reason. If your pet wouldn't take a certain supplement, that might be the reason. How often are you using steroids? We don't want to do that more than we need to. So let's do a little self-promotion here. Dr. Sean's Naturals, that's the website, drshawnsnaturals.com. No apostrophe, you don't spell the word doctor out, it's just D-R-S-H-A-W-N-S-N-A-T-U-R-A-L-S. -S -S. All one word, drshawnsnaturals.com. Doc? All those um, products are safe and effective. Yes, I'm, someone's talking in my ear? Yes, this is Dr. Kilstein talking, and we're going to have to start wrapping things up. Okay. Um, we got off to a low start, so we've got a, one minute to wrap up and then we go back to um, 
um, tell people where they can continue talking with you. Wonderful. Okay, so just check out the website. There is a 10% discount if you enter that code Doggington when you check out. Free shipping over $75. We have monthly specials. Same things I use in my practice. And if you need to get a hold of me, we do phone or website consultations. There's information on there how to do that, and we can set you up with some of these other products if you need that. But if you go check out Dr. Sean's Naturals, do enter the code Doggington. D-O-G-I-N-G-T-O-N, and through the month of June, you get 10% off any of your order. All the products we discussed are on the website. I've enjoyed being with you. Thanks again to Doggington Post for having me on. Hopefully, we'll be back in the fall and talk about cancer treatments, and we'll be going to Merrick's Facebook page in just a few minutes to talk about more of these things and try to answer some of your questions. So thanks for having me, and we will continue on Facebook in a moment. I know you're going to be announcing how to do that. Okay, well here we go. We are we are back here. And guys, it's now time for us to have our our contest that we have every day. So what we'd like is for you guys to get ready to start typing um, because you know that we're going to um, uh, we're going to ask you a question, and whoever answers the question first is going to um, win the um, the bag of, of uh, Merrick uh, dog food. So what we'd like from you is we're going to have everybody head over to Merrick's Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Merrick Pet Care. Dr. Sean's going to be answering your questions. Um, you can comment on the Facebook post about today's webinar, and Dr. Sean will dive right in and start answering your questions. Now, I see dozens of questions over here, so go right over there, and he will answer your questions. You can see the link right over there to continue the conversation. Just click on it, and you'll be there. Now, for those of you who are ready, uh, get your typing fingers ready, because uh, someone already wrote an answer in. Uh, I didn't even ask the question. Eh. All right, nice try there. Um, but the question is, get ready because you guys are fast, uh, and listen to the question. What's the most common group of dog prone to allergies? Okay, the first person with the right answer was Wendy. Wendy was the first person with the correct answer, and it is Terriers. I didn't ask for the breed. I asked for the group. A couple of you answered with the breed, but we were looking for the group, Terriers. We're just going to ask all of you guys to head over to the Facebook page to continue the conversation and to please have our good friends in at uh, National Mill Dog Rescue in your thoughts and in your hearts as um, they are dealing with those terrible fires. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Sean, for being with us today and continuing the conversation over there on Facebook. Thank you all for uh, joining us. And um, we are um, looking forward that, to have you on our next webinar. And if you came in late, we will um, have a recording for you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.